now. Uh, welcome, glad you're here. Uh, I asked to do the announcements today because they take a little longer and uh, Pastor Holler. Anyway, they, did y'all enjoy last Sunday's service? I want to do a sincere thank you to our pastors uh, for all the work they've done the Wednesdays before. I thought the uh, Pastor Laguton and Pastor Haas and Morgan and Pastor, and Pastor Morgan and Pastor Eric all done a wonderful job by doing that. And then our Sunday service was amazing. The uh, brass ensemble, uh, I, that, was, that was really, really nice. So thank you guys for all the hard work. Uh, actually let them off last week and let them have some time to their sales and go do some things. So, uh, But thank you, thank you. Um, a lot to go through here. In your uh, bulletin, you'll find this Yala sheet. Uh, <clears throat> so the Yala sheet is a fundraiser that St. Peter's is doing for a mission trip. Uh, they're doing barbecue. Uh, I've talked to a few of you. They've done it last year. They do a brisket and a pork plate you pick them up after church uh they have it ready to go it's in to go boxes you take it home and eat it but uh i'll be selling tickets after the service back there uh this is april the 21st but uh let's let's jump on board and help these guys out and it's it's very very good actually uh to be honest with you it's, it's good food uh get your flowers today the easter flowers i think the most of them's in the back uh, if you haven't picked them up already uh Let's get those things and get them home. If you don't want to take your flowers, what's left will be probably taken to the rest homes this weekend um, to give to some of the folks there at the rest homes. Speaking of this next weekend, Saturday's our big day. Pastor Eric has been big on trying to push this fun, uh, getting out in the community and doing some things. Um, we still need some help on the food end. So if if you don't want to work out in the community or putting mulch out and trimming trees or bushes or whatever, we still could use a plate. You got the best potato salad in Catawba County, fix us a bowl of it and bring it. Put your name on the list back there. Uh, there's a dinner at that night. You're welcome to come to it. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot going on next Saturday and the sign up sheets are still in the back. So please, please get on board on that. Um, let's see. We'll have a breakfast at 8 o'clock Saturday morning. That's what's going to kick it off, and then we'll go out and work for just a couple hours. That's all it's going to take, just a couple hours. Um, Jan Scott, please announce the uh, blood drive. We've got a blood drive coming up April the 16th. Um, if you're somebody that likes to do that, please, uh, please make sure you sign up. Uh, the dinner crew, uh, that's uh, Kim Kaler's. Uh, she's heading that thing up. She need they're going to go to Big Daddy's uh, April the 27th, but she needs you to sign up today. So there's going to be a, a sign up sheet out there. She needs to have some numbers today. So if you're planning on going to that, please uh, please sign up for that. Um, the all this is in your bulletin. I'm just going to go through some of the highlights of it. One of the things they're going to be doing next Saturday is visiting the nursing homes, but they're going to set up. Some of the people that don't want to go trim bushes are going to sit in here and, and do some like goodie bags for the nursing home, but we need some items and that's in your bulletin. Um, so please look at that. Um, the cemetery cleanup, you know how the wind's been blowing for the last couple of days. <clears throat> Secure those flowers. Uh, I'm picking up the same flowers every week. Uh, they're in the vases, it looks really pretty, but as soon as the wind blows, I can make a couple passes and I turn right around that same flowers back on the ground again. Uh, this is your heads up, I'll give it a couple weeks, but folks, when it comes down to it, when it's in the grass, it's in the trash. So it's, it's, it's time to move on from that. Uh, so uh, the youth, junior youth boys, uh, they're getting together this Friday Make sure and make note of that. And graduation Sunday is coming up. So if you've got a graduate in your family, college, uh, high school, whatever, Jan needs that information. It's in the yellow, pretty yellow box uh, 
on your thing that gives you more information on that. Uh, I'm thinking making, something that's coming up in our council that we we're, we're kind of kicking around, kind of give y'all a heads up on this too, is we're looking at maybe doing a volunteer pro or an after school program here. Don't know how that's gonna work out. We've looked at one in Maiden. Uh, they started with like eight kids. It's a one day after school. We pick them up at the elementary school. They come here, snack, devotion, games. Parents come pick them up here, take them home. Uh, we don't know, if we, we need volunteers. If this is something that's maybe you would like to get a part of or be a part of, uh, get with Jane Eisenhower, get with Patrick. Uh, if we got the manpower, then we know we can move ahead. It's gonna be one day a week. We don't know what day that is. We're just on the very front end of this thing, but Maiden started with like eight kids. They're over 100 now. So wouldn't it be amazing to have 100 kids down here telling them about Jesus and, and how the church works, and uh, I think it would be a cool thing. So if you're interested in that, please get with Jane or Patrick, and, and we'll see if we can move this thing forward. I think that's all I have. These guys don't look like they have anything else, so stand and greet your neighbor. Uh, there's bananas in the back, too. They just brought in a box. If you want some bananas, take home with you. So, All right, greet your neighbor, and we'll get ready for worship. Thank you, guys.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, we are admonished by Scripture. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, but the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a moment to reflect on God's word and then confess our sins together. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. And if you would, go ahead and take out your Bibles. And we'll just, for today's sake and time's sake, we'll go ahead and turn straight to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, we get uh, several readings from the book of Acts throughout the Easter season. And Acts 4, of course, happens after not only the resurrection, but after uh, the ascension of Jesus and the Spirit comes on the disciples and we get a kind of glimpse of what's going on in the disciples' lives afterwards. From Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them, for from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the cells, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you would, go ahead and stand again if you're able to sing the Alleluia verse and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. We begin at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also called Didymus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, See, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said again, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Again, this is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as we sing the hymn of the day. 
We celebrated this last week, but the reality is, is this is not just a day that we celebrate it, but a life of a Christian. And as Christians and as the church at large has set aside a whole season to celebrate Easter, so we are in the second Sunday of Easter because it is the most important and significant event in the history of the world that Jesus overcame death and the grave and obviously uh, the most important teaching of our Christian faith. And so we've decided, as to, after talking about it, that we're going to preach a, a series just on the resurrection appearances of Jesus. There's actually 11 of them that are recorded in Scripture. Uh, for whatever reason, the, the folks that came up with the lectionary every year during the season of Easter only let us read three of them, <laughs> only appoint three of them in the lectionary. So we're going to look at seven of the 11 uh, we've already looked at one last week, 
and that was when Jesus appeared to Mary right after he was raised from the dead. And so um, we hope it's a blessing to you. Uh, these won't be all chronological. We're kind of using the lectionary because today is the typical reading is the, the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples at night and then the next week with Thomas. Um, but uh, believe it or not, today is looking at the fifth and sixth appearance of Jesus. I got a real small print there, but if you want a copy of this, I can print it out for you. But those in yellow are all the appearances that Jesus is, appeared to on Easter Sunday to different people, uh, and all the Bible references to that, and then the other uh, remaining six are from uh, throughout the next 40 days before he ascends into heaven. Just kind of a snapshot. That's kind of giving you an idea of where we're going. We're just going to look at what are the, not only these events of when Jesus appears, but what do we glean from these? So today we look at John 20, uh, verses 19 through 23. And so with that said, I want to kind of set the stage by telling a story of a pastor who was doing a children's message on this very text. So he asked the, the kids that came up, he said, Okay, so today we're going to look at what was Jesus' first appearance to his disciples when they were all together. And so before we read it, I want to ask you, what do you think was Jesus' first words? And so little Susie was raising her hand. She's so cute. She's got her little pretty sundress on. She's got a bow in her hair. She's just beaming with excitement with her hand raised and just waving, waving. You know, he couldn't ignore her. She, he had to call on her. So, so he calls her and says, yes, Susie, what, what do you think he said? She jumps up and says, ta-da! <laughs> ta-da! Hallelujah, Christ is risen! Now, while Jesus could have said that, and it would have been appropriate, it would have been apropos, if you will, for him to say, ta-da, that wasn't his first words to his disciples. His first words were, peace be with you. Think about this. They were, we look at the beginning of the details of this text. What were they doing? They were early on the first evening. They were behind closed doors and they were locked for fear of the Jews. And I want you to kind of just put your mind where those disciples were. Imagine you've lost someone you love. What's a, maybe go back to when you first lost someone really dear to you, whether it's your husband, uh, a grandfather, a, a child. And, you lo- and you're not expecting to lose them. It happens suddenly. Imagine that happened just this past Friday, and it's Sunday. And now imagine that you're still in not only shock that you've lost this person, but this person has not just died tragically, but been executed. That's where the disciples were. So they were afraid, thinking that they may be next. So for them to be locked, and I would imagine perhaps barricaded, because they didn't have magnetic locks that don't always work properly, some of these were here earlier know that or have tried the, the door that's normally there and know that. But either way, they, weren't, they didn't have technology, so they were probably barricaded in. They were afraid. And while you could argue there are other words that could be the opposite of fear, I would say one of the best words would be peace. Because if I'm not afraid, I'm at peace. And so when Jesus looks at them and says, peace be with you he's saying don't be afraid and he's not only saying that to the disciples but he's saying that to you guys too he's saying that to you the senior in high school who's thinking well what if this doesn't work out this career path I'm thinking about going into he's saying peace be with you for that parent of a a loved one who's had their child graduate high school or recently going, or getting ready to and you're thinking well I, he's going to change she's going to change she's going to be different he says to you peace be with you for those of you contemplating a career change or, or moving or perhaps an undiagnosed 
symptoms that you're having or an upcoming surgery, whatever the case may be, Jesus looks to you and says, peace be with you. In fact, as I mentioned a moment ago, the opposite of peace is, is fear. There is, it is said that that is the number one command in all of Scripture. More than love, go love someone or love others or love each other. Even more than that is do not be afraid or fear not. Think about that. Jesus wants us to have peace. And how does he alleviate the, the fear in the disciples? After he says this, peace be with you, look at the very next word, uh, words. He shows them his hands and his side. And we're going to focus just on those verses 19 through 23, but if you read the rest of that text that we read earlier you know that eventually P Thomas and if you're like Thomas and you think oh, I gotta have proof I gotta put my fingers in in the hands and I gotta put my hand in his side remember what Jesus said to Thomas after he saw him you're you believe because you've seen but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe so with the eyes of faith go touch the side of Jesus with those eyes of faith be reminded that there is evidence that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and that those nail-pierced hands and pierced side are resurrected for you. But not only does he say, peace be with you, see that I'm resurrected, but look at the very next section. It's not just peace be with you, he showed them his sides and hands, but then he goes on. He says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Perhaps you remember from confirmation days, this is where we get our teaching called the Office of the Keys. I'm going to go deep into that. But yet last week I, I talked about the hope. And what is one of the main reasons we have to hope is we have our sins forgiven. 1 Corinthians 15 says it this way. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Because remember, if Jesus claims to not only forgive sins, and then he also claims that he's going to rise again after being persecuted, crucified and dead and buried and if we can know that he is raised from the dead then we can know that our sins are forgiven but get what Jesus says in addition to not only your sins are forgiven but he gives us the power to forgive others sins in Jesus name that's why we don't just say when people do us wrong or, or inflict pain on us and then they come to us and say, I'm sorry, I apologize. We don't say, it's okay, no worries, no problem. No, we say, I forgive you because as we have been forgiven, so you forgive others. This power that God sends us in is not just a ta-da, but it is, yes, he's been raised from the dead so that we can know that our sins are forgiven, but we have this gift to give to those around us. But I want to focus as we kind of wrap up. I'm being short today on purpose because we got, had a lot into our, our service today and, and announcements and so forth. But I want to focus on that sending part. As the Father has sent me with this grace, with this forgiveness, with this love, he says, I am sending you. Every time we go out of here, out these doors, God is sending us. Early on in my ministry, there was a call that just intrigued me so much. It wasn't a, an extended call to me, but it was one of those where if I would have been put on that call list, it would have been really tough to say no to. It was in Michigan. Well, you don't want to go to Michigan. No, I don't really want to go to Michigan. But the call, what they, the call was for, it was a pastor of sending. He was called to go out and equip the people of his congregation to send them out. It was his main job. 
is to help equip more and more of the congregation, this congregation of 2,200 people, to be sent out. Because they really got what Jesus was saying in today's text. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Again, this is the appointed text. I'd like to tell you, I purposely took and planned April 13th based on this text. But I didn't. I'm not that smart. And he knows I'm not that much of a planner. To notice that these two coincided with each other. But this is the gift we have. We have a privilege to go out from these walls with the love of Christ, knowing that we have been forgiven, knowing that nothing will separate us from his love. And we get a chance as one church united together to be his ambassadors, his sent ones. If you know the words, and you do, join me, please. Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, alleluia, suffer to redeem our loss, alleluia. Let us go out in that power united as one voice, sent by the Father. Amen. Would you join me in professing our faith together? Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son is the firstborn from the dead. In Him we have been reborn into a new and living hope. Nurture us with the pure milk of your word that we may grow to maturity of faith and have everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, grant to those ordained for your service the gift of the Spirit wisdom that comes down from above, and grace to faithfully fulfill their holy calling where you have placed them. Lord, in your mercy, as your people are united in the common life and love of our Savior, grant that we would share that life and love with those even in our own community. Lord, in your mercy, 
build up the households of your people, that your holy children, begotten in baptism, may grow in your grace and share together in your forgiveness and life. Lord, in your mercy. You have instituted authorities to carry out your justice. Bless all who make, administer, and judge the laws of our land. Give them wisdom and integrity and honor to serve according to your good will, including those men and women of our armed forces. Lord, in your mercy. Has your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples? Give your presence and comfort to the troubled in our midst, especially for Ken, for Don, Paula, Judy, Leanne, for some of our shut-ins like uh, Shirley and Richard, Johnny, Angela, Annie, Eric, Vicki, Everett, George, Terry, Tommy, Margaret, Ted, Linda, Maxine, Sean and, and Janie, Sydney, Jean, Shirley, Naomi, and Helen. Comfort also those who weep, especially the family of Melba Hennessy, with the blessed joy of Easter morning. Lord, in your mercy. And Father of the risen Christ, you give us the crucified and risen body and blood of our Lord in this supper. Let us taste that the Lord is good and continually grow up into salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace, for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and instituted the blessed sacraments, that through them we may have comfort and forgiveness of sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may heartily believe your word, and through the holy sacraments establish our faith day by day, until at last we obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we now gather our tithes and offerings to be used for the work of the Lord. <laughs>
Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Therefore, gathered in his name, together we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil and that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this, he said, in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Again, Jesus said, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace as you serve our living Lord.